And I think once you see it, you'll be like, oh, that totally makes sense. And if not, then you should say, that doesn't make sense. And I will try to help explain it. All right, so here we go. Um, in number six, it says, suppose a 0.5 kilogram cart. Oh, what am I doing? Am I recording? I am. Good. Yay me. All right, here we go. Uh, 9.1, number six. Mass is 0 0.5 kilograms worth of cart. Uh, it says it's set up on a horizontal frictionless track between two springs, each with a spring constant of 4 newtons per meter. A says if we pull the cart back 0 0.30 meters and release it, what is the period? All right. Well, again, it's an oscillating spring system. So the period is this, right? And it looks like that the point 0.3 doesn't even matter, does it? Did I say this already this hour, that how much you cause the thing to oscillate doesn't matter? Did we talk about that yet or no? So it turns out if I pull this down just a teeny bit and let it go, then, I mean, you can time it, but, you know, that takes some amount of time to go up and down. Okay? If I pull it down farther, it still takes the same amount of time. Okay? It has farther to go, but it's also moving faster because I stretched it more, so it had more kinetic energy, you know? Well, elastic potential energy. Does that make sense? Okay? Similarly, I think I showed you that, hopefully, in the video I showed you that, that how far you pull a pendulum back it doesn't matter, right? But if you get it going a little bit, it's not moving very fast. Whereas if you have it going farther, it's moving faster, but the time is still the same. Cool? All right. So, um, before we go any further, I guess, in order to, for this problem to make sense, what does this mean? What does it mean to have a spring constant of 4 newtons per meter? You need uh, 4 newtons of force to pull that string 1 meter? Yeah, exactly. You need 4 newtons of force to stretch it 1 meter, right? So, here, I want to stretch this 1 meter. I need 4 newtons of force, right? How much force would I need, then, to stretch two of those springs 1 meter? Wouldn't I need twice as much force? Right? Why, why are you saying you need squared, Alex? That's energy. We're talking force. F is kx. Right? I gotcha. So, yes, if we're talking about energy, then you'd be right. But well, we're talking about force. Okay? So, do you guys see that? That I would need, I've got two springs. I'm going to need twice as much force to stretch two springs the same distance, right? Follow? So, this is the spring constant for one spring, but there are two springs. So, I can kind of treat that as 8 newtons per meter. Because for every one meter, I'm going to need eight newtons worth of force. Follow? All right. And so then, for part A, you just plug in eight newtons per meter into this equation with your mass, and you get the right answer. And then B is exactly what you'd think it would be, where you just use the regular four. Does that work, Lauren? Yeah, I did that the first time. I think I just must have plugged it in wrong. Typed it in wrong. All right. Now, as a quick comment. The setup, though, in that problem isn't like this. It's like this, right? It says that a cart is stretched between two springs. All right? So the idea is that if I stretch this this way, what's happening is I'm exerting force to stretch this one. But, and this is a little bit sloppy, I also have to exert force to compress this one. Okay? And so those two forces combined results in us needing to double that. Okay? Now, I'm being a little bit sloppy here because technically speaking, this isn't in its relaxed state. Um, if you're interested in why that doesn't matter, I'm happy to show you. It's like 10 steps of algebra. It's not bad. It's basic algebra. But most of you don't care. Okay? So if you happen to be one of those people that cares and you're like, well, but wait a minute. This is already stretched. And you want to know, then we can talk at the end of class and I'll show you. Okay? All right. Cool. Um, all right, so problems with six. All right, and then finally, seven and eight are just uh, variations on this, right? You're given two of the variables, you've got to find the third one, right? Good. Questions, issues, concerns regarding simple harmonic motion. Going once, 